James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the inline. They go play action here on first down. And some room to work. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Five yards on the pickup. And that'll bring up second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. They'll run it now out of the gun. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. They just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. He'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it, and it took the ball off course. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. And now running right through it. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. On play action, they'll throw. And he finds a man with a crossing route. 18 yards there and a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Another nice gain. 16 yards there and a first down again. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that could be pinpoint here. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks. Now he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. successful opening drive would we call that methodical I guess when it takes that many plays methodical and almost like a boxing match where you're hitting them with body blows they can withstand them here look they gave up the touchdown but you don't feel like a knockout is there but they keep doing that in the fourth quarter that's when the knockout occurs yeah, it becomes tough for that defense if they're on the field that long we'll see if they can continue that in future drives this is taken just shy of the 10 here and a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And trotting out there, their tall quarterbacks. Danik at 6'5".
Back to throw now on first down. Looking left side, he's got it complete. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. Touchdown, New Orleans. A big play there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. So, Charles, the season winding down, the playoffs obviously not in their future. As they look ahead to the offseason, what spots do they maybe need to fill? I think that they're like the guy who's calling the plays and throwing the ball. I think that he's a pretty good player. Need some help, I think, on the perimeter, though. Help him out with receivers because I think if he gets an upgrade there, his play gets that much better, too. Give him nine on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Looking to throw. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. They run left side. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. He'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Right, here we go. Three. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually... Yeah, the ball is knocked out. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Inside the 10. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, if you want to be known as dependable to your quarterback, that's what you have to do. Go into the middle of the field, know the hit is coming, 
and catch the football. And that's exactly what he just got done. And defensively, a little deflating to be able to lay that hit and not have the ball pop free, right? No doubt about it, because your goal defensively, knock it free so that they say, okay, guess what? We're not going to throw it in there anymore. Now, they'll still continue to be aggressive. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. They'll look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. And from the three now, it's second and goal. And a big tackle there as the defender runs right through him. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football, if you're going to throw it. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down just inside the five-yard line. And now the Tampa Bay field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. field comes New Orleans and last time the formula was pretty simple one play drive long pass that maybe they just want to do that again right and that's exactly how you want to draw things up whether it's on your grease board right in your playbook one play drives exactly what you want on offense what they have to be careful of is not having a letdown it was fairly easy last time they can't expect that going forward and we'll see if it's that easy here well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Well, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Steps away to his left. Now he'll throw deep left. He's got it at the 15. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A big play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints have taken the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. And that makes it 14-10.
That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. So out come the Bucks now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throwing right, and that's complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And some space here. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So a field goal here, they're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good, because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. They find some open field here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. So we've reached...
no Go update Frank. from Larry after 17 weeks. Folks are saying, let's get on with the show. So we'll oblige as we get you set for the second half kickoff. Come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. He lost nine there. That's really going to set him back for second down. All right, here we go. They're going to look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second and long. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now back to throw. Forced out to his left. And some room to maneuver. It's a gain of nine yards. And just like that, it's third down. Partner was a definite passing down, but he was able to leak out and pick up some good yardage, even though the coverage was excellent. Maybe it's not exactly how they drew it up, but he still got a big chunk of yardage on second down. They'll set up a throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard at the 44-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They'll drop to throw. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. 
I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. to throw and his throw is going to be incomplete let's face it perfection is something we all chase whether it's playing this game or whatever we do hard to attain but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete and now whistles and a flag and I think we got to jump here neutral zone infraction defense And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. And to give this time to the tailback. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And as we've seen throughout this season, it's no picnic trying to score touchdowns against this unit. They're ranked number one against the run. But it's also difficult because it's not easy to throw the ball against them either. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. Back now in Tampa. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. set for a big two-point conversion. Meanwhile, up in Atlanta, and you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. Blaine Gabbert, a single touchdown pass to this point in that one. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And when you're facing a deficit on the scoreboard, you're just looking for something to get you right back into the game, and that's the spark that they were looking for. They got it with that big return. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. And right now, a lot to like on that screen. They've wrapped up the division, now currently sitting in the coveted number two spot. Of course, you want one. you'd love number one, but if you can't have one, number two is pretty good. I agree with you totally, and here's the other part, too. The really good teams, the really confident teams, they're not as worried about being number one. Two is fine because they feel like they can go on the road and win against number one if they absolutely have to. The big thing, though, is clinching one of those early buys and able to sit and get a little rest as the playoffs begin. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That's how you pick up a first down. You know where the sticks are. You know where the first down marker is, and you find a way to get there. That's called having vision. He had a lot of vision last week, didn't he? NFC Offensive Player of the Week, he was dominant. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, That'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now a handoff here to his running back. Even with him busting through the contact, he'll still be stopped just inside the 35. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Here we go now. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. 
but usually he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker, and now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great effort there. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Saints have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they've up their lead to three. So that effort gives him a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Going to throw right side here, complete. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get up near the 45, they'll spot it at the 44. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he slides to avoid the hit. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Back to throw. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. After reviewing the play, the line on the field is reversed. Second down following the incompletion. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. The Bucks on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 16. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And now before they run this fourth down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Back to throw. 
Oh, he's got some breathing room. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. And he's got some space here. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Second down following the run. Now they try the right side here. And some room to roam now. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Boy, missed tackles. That could be their downfall, Charles. Yeah, they actually let him out of bounds there. Instead of the clock continuing to run, they let him out, and it turned into another timeout for him. Not good at all. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. He'll drop the throw, and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Back to throw here. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Oh, and after the sack, he's still down on the field. And in week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. Here we go. A big play in a tight game late. They're going on fourth and goal. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Being chased out. Oh, no. He lost the football. And the Buccaneers have it. And they're not to convert on fourth down. All I know, partners, that with every play call that came in, there was a little discussion about, hey, we can seal this bad boy. We can really put ourselves in a great spot to take total control, and yet they find a way to cough it up. Yeah, the two-score game opportunity eludes them, and now a chance for the other side to come back here. Yeah, that means defense has to go out there and make some plays themselves. So we call sudden change. Let's see if the defense is mentally ready to take care of it. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. He'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Trying to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. A very solid gain of 27. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Throws right side, and that's complete. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. A nice gain of 21 yards. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Right, here we go. Green, 
One final shot. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep down. That's caught inside the 20. And he'll be down deep into New Orleans territory.